Okay, um, I'm going to give you a little tutorial on um, my opinions of some things on this uh, on this particular snowmobile. Um, this is a 97 600 XCR Polaris, and uh, I've pulled the engine on it. Um, this is about uh, sleds, used sleds, and uh, kind of my opinions on them. Um, you can buy one of these uh, for not much, um, under a thousand dollars easily. Um, this one was a running, running sled, albeit it was uh, set for um, altitude. I bought it up in the mountains, so it was set up for uh, a lot of, uh, you know, altitude. It's got a, it's raked out it's a powder sled it's got a two inch paddle on it and, and uh, it's clutched and jetted for oh, about seven or eight thousand feet and I'm down to a thousand feet so uh, it runs really lean uh, needless to say uh, so I pulled the engine out and uh, we don't recommend you do this unless you've had one of these out of, on a part before um, or unless you you know really good with engines, but it's best to take and uh, to uh, uh, bag up things and mark them. Uh, tell you exactly where where they all go. Um, essentially, right now I'm waiting on my crankshaft. Um, I sent my crank out to have it rebuilt, and uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of work at a time until I can get the crankshaft uh, uh, done or back. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my cylinders. And then if I have enough time, I'll uh, work on my carburetors. And I will work on my, uh, oh, either, no, I can't work on my clutch because I don't have all the parts for it yet. Probably my pull start. So essentially what I'm doing to the sled is I'm making it dependable. Um, I'm not sinking a lot of money into it, but... Uh, taking an engine apart like this and repairing things, uh, you could easily get into what you paid for the sled. Uh, you know, to have your crankshaft rebuilt, uh, you're looking, you know, $300, $400. So, uh, you know, a cylinder uh, for one of these is the same. Um, you know, you could spend twelve or thirteen hundred dollars on cylinders, uh, pistons, and rings. So eBay is a good source for good used parts. Um, it, 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 the engine is going to be what it, it is. What it is. Um, I'm not going to put a lot of money into it, but I'm going to try to make it dependable. Uh, I'm going to fatten it up definitely, and uh, that way it's not going to run so lean. I'm going to disconnect and do away with the, uh, the the oil injection, which, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, uh, is isn't very good. Essentially, what you're doing here is is your you, for your oil injection, you've got a pump, and you're pumping oil into this little this little gallery right here, and it's it's the tiniest little tiniest little jet and uh, the little jet is you know, I mean that oil's going in there and then your gas is going in there also and in my opinion it's just not uh, it's just not it's just not right uh, if you mix your oil and gas you have to remember a couple of things one uh, if you Rebuild your engine, you're going to have to mix it fat, rich, you know, 36 to 1, maybe 32 to 1. And then once it, uh, once it, you run a tank through like that, you can mix it about 40 to 1, depending on what kind of oil you use. If you're just using mineral oil, you might even want to use it fatter than that. But I'm using uh, Klotz Technoplate, which is a, a synthetic. So I'm... Uh, I'm feel like I'm I'll be safe with that the whole situation with oil injection is this the intake charge going into the engine is gasoline and that oil is just kind of drizzling in there 
So those bearings are getting oiled with uh, some oil and a little bit of gas and a lot of gasoline, and it's I guess it's mis mixing up there. I guess. That's a, but if you mix your oil and gas in a can, you take a gas can and you put a half a quart of oil in five quarts, and it's forty to one. And you mix it up and you shake it up and you dump it in your tank. By God, going into your carburetors is oil. Going into your engine is oil. And you know you're oiling. And I'm not going to take the chance after spending so much money on this. So that's my opinion. And, you know, you guys can say what you want about it. And the oil injection works fine. And blah, blah, blah. But I have always been a mix my oil and gas guy. One other reason. This sled has signs uh, that it's been rolled. Uh, the um, windshield's Frankenstein, and it's got some cracks in the cowl and whatnot, and plastic, fiberglass. So that little oil tank right there went topsy turvy. And when they go topsy turvy, you could get an air bubble in your line. You get an air bubble in your oil line, and you're not oiling your engine at all. You know, there go your crank bearings, and you start scalling up your pistons. Start coming apart really quick. Um, these Fuji engines, they're really good engines, but they're really delicate, uh, which means everything has to be so, or they'll come apart quickly. This particular engine does not have a bearing that is oiled by the oil injection. That means I can mix my oil and gas. On some of the Fuji engines I've seen, uh, they have a line going to the bearing. And you better keep your oil injection because if you do not, you're going to burn up your bearings. This particular engine doesn't have that. The bearings are lubricated by the charge coming into the engine, the oil and gas mix. Okay. Enough said. I'm going to work on my cylinders. And my cylinders, there's a couple that are bad and there's a couple that are good. This one's all nice and clean, so I know it comes from eBay. And I got a piston, rings, a pin, a bearing, and a really nice clean cylinder for about a hundred bucks. And uh, I'll show you when I'm replacing. These really aren't too bad. I don't know if you can see that, but it is scuffed up a little bit. It is scuffed. And I do believe it's because the engine ran lean. And the cylinder is also slightly scuffed, although I can see cross hatches in it. But it does have a couple of score marks in it. So I'm trying to take all the gremlins out of this engine and make it as best as I can without spending a lot of money. If the engine ran with pistons that were like this and held 120 pounds each cylinder, then what I'm going to do to it is only going to be better. And this looks really bad, and I can feel that in there. And this is probably the worst. So, And the cylinder is the same way. So we're going to set these two aside, and we're going to have a look at what we're going to keep. When you take your engine apart, keep all, all the parts to one cylinder together. Don't mix and match things. Keep the piston with the piston, or piston with the piston pin and the um, bearing and the cylinder together. Uh, they rode in that area a trillion times and they like being in that same area. And when you start switching things around, they don't like being in that area because there's microscopic differences and they take up those microscopic differences by wearing. Uh, here's one, um, here's an original. This is a 3,000, almost 4,000 mile engine. It does have a mark there on it. I'm going to probably, I'm going to probably take that mark down a little bit with maybe some 1,200, just slightly, just so it's not so bad. And I'm also going to hone these cylinders. Now, you, you might say, well, that's a Nicosil cylinder and you can't hone it. 
Okay, you can hone a Nicosil cylinder slightly. Enough where you can put a new set of rings in it. You're not going to hone it until it's until you know you've gone right through the coating to the aluminum. Uh, but you're going to do it slightly. This is another eBay uh, piston and it was another about a hundred dollars. It came with pin and a nice bearing and whatnot. Incidentally, if you buy an eBay part, you want to make sure you want to look at the piston pin. And if they're on eBay and they're not showing you a lot of pictures, beware. Because one, you know, scratch or crack or something in the cylinder is not any good. And there's a reason why they're used parts and there's a reason why they're so cheap. Um, you can look at the pin and you can look at the bearing. And what you don't want the bearing to be is blue. Do not buy a blue pin or a blue bearing because that got hot, hot, hot and uh, it's no longer any good. Also, I recommend, and you don't have to do this, but I recommend it, that you buy new circlips uh, or inspect the ones you have very carefully because if one of these comes out, you've, you've launched your engine. So these two I'm setting aside. These three I'm going to use. Remember that this is a triple. On this particular engine, it doesn't matter which is which. Some triples, some twins it matters. On this particular engine it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to be taking the exhaust manifolds off, putting them on with new gaskets. I'm also going to be honing and I'm also going to be using new rings. Now, rings. Parts in general. Um, let me tell you a little something about Fuji engine. Fuji engine is one of the finest engines that ever been produced. They are fine engines and many 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 people have went and did many many hours of schooling in order to develop these engines everything's just so if you use aftermarket parts your engine will run like it's aftermarket if you use factory parts you'll take the gremlins out of the equation now yeah, Kimpex makes a set of pistons for this and rings and they're $120 and they probably are fine. Uh, I'm. This engine was designed to have this set of rings made in Japan, not in Taiwan or China, and this piston and this cylinder and that's what the engine was designed to. When you start when you start cutting corners, uh, your engine's going to cut corners. So I'm trying to make this a reliable sled. Maybe I can put another couple thousand miles on it. That being said, I'm going to use pure Polaris parts whenever I can. And most all of them are available. Um, I think the only thing I'm not going to use that's pure Polaris is the gasket set. And the gasket set is the same thickness and the same quality. I think I'm using a Windrosa gasket set. Uh, yeah. So I believe I've used Windrosa before and they're pretty good. So there you go. Um, but as far as, you know, you can get away with some things like maybe a gasket as long as the base gasket's the same size, you're not going to fool with the compression ratio or anything like that. If you're dealing with something like that, but if you're dealing with something that's machined and it's something like a piston ring, I'm going to spend the extra money, albeit these are $20 each. And there's two on each piston. Um, you're, you know, it, you're going to save the money in the long run. So realistically if you wanted to do it absolutely right you'd buy all new parts uh, but I'm trying to get out of this as inexpensively as I can so what we're going to do is we're going to take one cylinder and we're going to hone it we're going to chamfer it that is we're going to take a, a small little dremel if it's if it's got any sharp edges around the ports and we're going to dress those just slight, slightly and uh, we're going to run a a little hone down it 
And uh, if I can find my home, I think I bought a new home. Yes, I did. Um, there's a couple different homes. Uh, I'm kind of particularly like these flex homes, and they're kind of what they call a dingleberry home. And we're just going to put a little edge on that cylinder. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow that ring, the new ring, to seat into that cylinder. And uh, I'll show you how that's done here just as soon as I get this out. So let me hold off here and uh, I'll be right back.